I'm going to be playing with the Sweet Critters stamp and die set again along with a beautiful 6x6 paper pad to make a couple of fun and quick projects today. Hi guys, it's Beth and welcome. Like I said, I'm going to be using the Sweet Critter Stamp and Die Set from Not Too Shabby Shop along with the Bloom Wildly 6x6 pad that was from Scrapping for Less. And I'm going to be making a card and some post-it note holders today. I have everything pre-cut and ready to go. And I'm actually using the sketch from the Not Too Shabby Shop for this one. This is their March challenge. Normally they do a mood board and this month they did a sketch to follow. So we are going to be using that for our card today. And I am using an A2 card base. I have some of the Sweet Critters already stamped, die cut out and colored, and then the other pieces of my card are ready to go. So my card mat here, I just chose a green pattern for the mat and it is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And that will leave a small white border around my mat. And then we'll go ahead and apply that down. And then I've got the strips. I just chose a couple different patterns or four, I guess, four different patterns and cut them down into the strips that the sketch calls for that are three and a half inches by one inch. And I'm going to use my ATG for this as well. I know some people like to use wet glue because they say it gives them a little more wiggle room to move their strips around, but I actually find that the ATG works better for me. So I'm going to apply the top and the bottom strip first. And I realized there that I need to put one of my, I was going to alternate white and color. And I'm going to line up kind of the top and bottom just so that there's an equal border on three sides. And then the two in the middle, I'm just going to make sure that they're lined up on the sides. And then I can kind of fiddle with them as long as I haven't pressed, pressed it down yet. I still have some room to move them. So I have... A kind of a wonky stitched rectangle that I've already die cut it's an old scrapping for less die and I'm going to use that for the rectangle element on my card and then I'm going to use this little critter that I had colored up in some grays and a heart that I had used like die cut from some peach pattern paper earlier this month and the die is part of the die set. And one great thing about this die set is that it cuts the arms so that you can slide something underneath the arms of the critter and it looks like it's holding something. So I'm gonna have it hold the heart and then I'm also gonna add the sentiment a warm hello at the top of my rectangle and I'm just gonna stamp it directly on there. And then I will glue my critter down to my rectangle, ele rectangle element and apply that to my card. So the sketch actually called for a kind of a taller skinnier rectangle and have it off center to the left there but since mine is shorter and wider it doesn't really leave that much on that one side so I'm just going to go ahead and center it and there is my card. So for the next two projects, I'm going to be making some post-it note holders just using some normal like three inch uh, size 3M post-its. And I have some heavy duty white cardstock already pre-cut and it's like 110 pound and it's three and a quarters inches wide by seven inches long. And then I've already gone ahead and pre-scored in the center there at three and a quarter inches from both sides. And that's gonna give me a spine that's half an inch wide. I'm gonna go ahead and use my bone folder to burnish these down just so that the creases are nice and strong. And 
And then because I'm using a six by six pad, like potentially if you were using a bigger paper pad and the paper was strong enough, you could probably just use that as your base. I've done that before if it's like a heavier duty pattern paper or pattern cardstock. But because I'm using a six by six pad, it's not long enough for the the holder itself so I'm just going to add some layers on top of the holder with my pattern paper so once you fold it up that front square of the holder ends up being three and a quarter inches square and so I cut two pieces of the same pattern paper at three and an eighth inch square so that leaves me with just a little bit of a, a white border around the front and then I just picked two different patterns to make two different holders and I'm going to go ahead and use our glitter glue to apply these down. You can use double-sided tape. You can use any other strong adhesive, like a heavier duty adhesive that you have. I, if you're, I'm making these to sell for a craft show that's coming up this spring. If you're just making it for yourself, you know, you can probably use ATG, but if you're making these to gift or to sell and you're not sure how they're going to be used, I recommend a heavier duty adhesive just so that they're going to hold up. Uh, if you think about people who are going to be opening them repeatedly to get the post-its out or if it's going to be in somebody's bag or purse, you want it to be, you know, nice and glued down so it's not going to come apart. So anyway, I'm just getting all four of my little panels glued down and using the bone folder just to burnish it a little bit more to make sure that glue is really gonna hold. And then I've got two critters, one that I had die cut out of some, stamped and die cut on some pattern paper earlier in the month, and then one that I just colored up in some whites. And then I did color a kind of a peachish pink bow for that other, the one in white. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down onto the front of my post-it holders. And I'm just gonna keep it simple not adding a whole lot of layers or embellishments on these. <clears throat> and get that cute little girl put down and then I will add her bow. Up at the top there. And then like I said these are the 3M post-its. 3 inches and I'm going to use some more of my art glitter glue just to apply to that very back like holder sheet of the post-it pad and then again burnishing it down on the back side there. And I realized after I got that first post-it pad in that I had wanted to also cut some pieces for that spine and totally spaced it. So I'm gonna come in now with some of the scraps that I had from each of those patterns. Because they're already three and an eighth inch wide, I'm just gonna cut them down to three eighths inches, or the three and an eighth inches long, I'm gonna cut them down to three eighths of an inch wide. And that'll leave me with a little border around my, paper, around my strip for the spine as well. So as you can see, it's, it's really easy to put it on before you add the paper pad, which is when I should have done it on both of them. But So adding that second pad, and then I'm going to come back and try and add my strip onto the top of this pad as well, and then trying to figure out how best to kind of burnish it on there. So now that one is finally done. So here are my three projects for today, and I hope you guys enjoyed. The sketch from Not Too Shabby Shop, I will try and link down in the description box below. And I will also link the products that I use, the stamp and die set, which is their stamp and die set of the month for March 2022. And any of the other products that I used, I will include down in the links below as well. But I thank you guys so very much for your time today. And like I said, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you all have a very crafty day.